Okay, to start with, I want to go back to yesterday and give you a, let's keep it simple, four, five, six, seven uh, times one, two, three, four, five, six. Will those matrices even multiply? Don't say it. Do an analysis, and if they will multiply, you should be able to tell the kid next to you why. So first of all, copy them down. Some of you haven't copied them yet. And then can they multiply or not? Has to do with what their name is, like two by two, two by three, three by two, that kind of thing. Ethan, what's that first one? Two by two. Two by two. Well, that one's easy because you can't even mess up the rows and the columns. But what is first, the rows or the columns? Rows. Rows. So it's row, then column. So if you do that on this one, Ethan, what do you think the answer is? Is it two by three or is it three by two? Two by three. Two by three. Now, how can you tell for sure that these do work? Because they do. Albright. Yeah. Those two tell you something. What do they tell you? They tell you that they work. Yes. Since it matches, they work. And then the answer will be a what by what? Yes, the outside ones here tell you that it's the answer is a two by three, which looks just like this parent. I like to think of it as these are the parents' functions. We do use that terminology in pre-calc sometimes, uh, where you're headed. All right, so if those two make a function, that function will have one, two, three, four, five, six answers in it. And it'll be shaped like this, like a two by three, just like one of its parents. By the way, I didn't say that the resulting function will always look like one of its parents. I said that it comes from this and this. So for instance, if you had a two by three and a three by seven, do you get these match and it would work? And the answer would be a two by seven, which doesn't look like either parent. Get what I'm saying? All right, and that happens with human beings all the time. Sometimes you don't look like your mom or your dad. You look like some new creation, which you are. All right, so this one, though, looked like one of its parents. I know what a two by three is. It looks like that. So I make my little Easter eggs. And now you either remember how you do this or you don't. And the research says that if I just tell you how to do it from here, that you will not remember it nearly as well as if I make your brain work to recall. How do you do that again? I don't. Don't say it, please. I want everybody's brain to work to remember how to do it. And then actually get the answers. They're not that hard if you know how to multiply and add. If you missed yesterday, you're probably clueless right now, which I understand. But you could have watched the video and you'd be all caught up. All right, we're going to pause for a minute while you rack your brain for how does this work again. It has to do with rows and columns, of course. Afton, can you tell me this spot here is not row one, column one. What is it, though? Row two, column one. Row two, column one. So we're going to use row two, which is on the first matrix, is the row matrix, and column one. Can you tell me what to do with the six, seven, and one, four? We multiply six times one. Six times one is six. 7 times 4 is 28, and then what? 28 and 6. I think it's 34, is that right? All right. I'm not feeling completely solid on that. Did anybody else get 34 independently of me? Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. All right. That's how to do one of them. Now go do the rest of them. You figure out their address like that. That tells you what row and what column to use. All right, we use Dice of Destiny to pick the next contestant. And the matrix is right. Row one, last person, Chase R. Tell me, I'm going to choose this spot right here to do. Can you tell me what its address is? Row one, column three. Row one, column three, good. So I'm going to go back over here to row one, which I'll use this. And column three, which is that. Now what? Four times the three, yep. Let me erase these so we know which two we're looking at here. 
four times the three and five times the six. That sounds like 12 and 30. So what do you think the final answer is? 42. Raise your hand if you had 42. Awesome. Meaning of life. According to Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. All right. So there's one, two, three, four left that we haven't answered yet. Your job is to answer those. Go ahead. And in a second, I'm going to have somebody read answers. Jack Metner, you're next. Tell me this one. Just tell me right to the answer. 41. 41. Anybody verify 41? Oh, okay. The first one. Now nine. Anybody have a nine? Okay, maybe not. All right, so then let me help you. Would you agree that first one there is row one, column one? Yeah. Okay. So then would you agree I have row one circled right here? And this, four times one is four, five times four is 20, 24 would be the right answer. All right, uh, next person to be a contestant here is row one, person four, Heinz, that's you. What's this middle one to on the top? Um, row one, column two. Okay, just you can jump right to the answer. Um, Haven't done that one yet? 33. 33, anybody verify 33? Lots of nodding heads. Good. Good. Josie, this one on the bottom middle. 47. Anybody else get 47? Lots of nodding heads. Good. And then the last one, Brody. 60. Anybody else get 60? Yeah. All right. Good. Cool. I feel like you remember multiply. That was huge. Now, this new stuff is called identity matrix. Identity means like yourself. Like, what's your identity? Okay. So if you ever have a chance to get into, like, one of those Star Trek tra teleporters where it dematerializes you and rematerializes you in somewhere else, like it teleports you there, I'm going to be very nervous to get into one of those because I'm going to feel like it's not really me on the other side. You know, and maybe after I see enough people do it, and they're like, oh, no, it's fine. I'm, I'm still me, and I'm normal. And maybe then I could watch somebody do that and go, okay, fine, I'll try it. But I would be worried that I have a different identity, that I'd be different after I got dematerialized and then beamed onto some other planet that I would actually be different, and that would kind of suck. So, so anyway, an identity matrix keeps the identity the same. That means you multiply by this matrix, and the thing won't change. So, for example, if I have a matrix that's 2, 1, 3, 7, that's its unique little pattern. And you have your own unique little pattern. It's called your DNA. The only person who has a DNA that's the same as somebody else is identical twins. <coughs> identical twins do have the same DNA. You probably don't have an identical twin. Anybody in here have an identical twin? All right, so then you're all unique. Your, your DNA is all different than each other. All right, so this is like this identical uh, it, or sorry this is like the identity for something you would think you'd multiply by this to keep it the same but it's not true it doesn't work i want you to prove it to yourself just to multiply this out enough so you can see that it does not bring back this exact matrix as soon as it is different you can stop Let's try multiplying it for a sec it's a two by two and a two by two And then these match, so the answer is a 2 by 2. I just want you to see that that does not, the, identi the identity matrix doesn't work. It does not come out exactly the same as it was in the first place. Anna Janes, can you tell me a number with it that proves that it's not? Um, the upper left -hand corner. What did that come out to? Uh, three. Anybody else get 3? Yeah. Yes? Okay, good. Clearly that's not the same as two, is it? So it did not replicate the original one like you would think. Does anybody want to speculate without looking ahead in the notes? do cheat. Does anyone want to speculate what would make it the same? If you just put all zeros, incorrect. Otherwise, just make it all zeros. Incorrect. All zeros does not bring back the original. 
If you try it, you'll see it won't bring back the original. It'll bring back part of the original. Yes? Yes, it is a zeros and ones. And these are ones. Everybody, just verify for yourself that that pattern, 1001, brings back the original. Try it. This is row one, column one. Use it. Comes out with a two there. It's starting off promising. <coughs> Tate, do this next one. Tell me how this works again. Um, two times zero, zero. Wait, wait. Row what and column what? Row one, column two. Okay. Row one, column two. So it's these two are in blue. So now what? Two times zero, zero, and then one times one is one. And that's a one then. And that brought back the original. Yay. Bottom line, it works. So that is called the identity matrix. See how I got a stripe of ones down the diagonal there? That's the identity matrix. That'll bring back the original one. So if you have a three by three, that's what you'd multiply by. You catching on enough so that if I said, what is it for a four by four, you could figure out it'd be ones like this and all the rest of them are zeros. You get the idea? Okay. So then that's the, what you do if you want the original back. Now, there's something more powerful than that, though, that we're doing today. And it is, you're going to involve something called the determinant. All right. So I'm just going to wrap up this first section. If I wanted this matrix... To come back again, tell me what I would multiply by. It's called the identity matrix. And what does it look like? All right, phone usage is getting worse. I've noticed two people touch their phone. I should have already put them in jail, but this is your last chance. All right. So you should have said one zero 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 one zero 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 one. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Cool. That is called the identity matrix. Now there's something completely different that is called an inverse. Let me make sure you understand why you care. If I have two times n equals eight, do you agree that it's important for kids to know that you divide to solve this thing? See, there's a times here, and they gotta know that. What fixes that, what undoes this number, is divided by 2. That is called its inverse. Inverse. What if I said n plus 7 equals 8? How do you fix that? Well, minus 7, minus 7. Why'd you do that? Because that's the inverse of that. Add and subtract our inverses. Do you remember solving things like n squared equals 64? I know the answer is 8. No, it's not. <coughs> what do you do? Square root. Square root. Square root. And then what do you get? Um, positive negative 8. Yes. Don't forget the absolute value thing. What was the inverse? Squared and square root. Inverses. So when you have a matrix, focus, focus. When you have a matrix like this, 1, 4, 2, 7 times x, y, doesn't that sort of look like an equation? It's got variables, it's got something in front of the variables that we want to get rid of. Do you get if we got rid of this, this thing would be solved? The problem is you can't just divide matrices. No such thing. You can't just divide both sides by 1, 4, 2, 7. It doesn't exist. But what you can do is the 
inverse of it. You know, like getting rid of this with its inverse. Not the identity. We already, that, that's a different thing. The inverse will get rid of it. Now, to do that, you need to know something called the determinant. Its abbreviation is DET. So please copy this problem exactly. 1427 times XY equals 10, 12, 14, 16. And then I'm going to give you the formula for finding the determinant. You will have to do one of these by hand. And you might be thinking, what well, thought you said we have a calculator in the test? Yeah, but we're going to put a letter in there, and then the calculator won't be able to do it. So you'll have to know how to do this by hand. So copy the problem. Raise your hand if your problem is already copied. Okay, awesome. That's most of you. In a second, I'm going to be walking around because there's several of you. It's springtime. Kids are having a hard time focusing. And some of you haven't copied this yet. Get it copied now, please. All right, now, to get the determinant, this is called the DET. I need to figure out this times this. 1 times 7 minus, I'm going to do these in green, that times that. 2 times 4. It won't matter if you did 4 times 2 or 2 times 4. Irrelevant. The determinant here for this matrix that we are trying to get rid of, the determinant for it is 7 minus 8, which is negative 1. Now, does that mean just multiply this by negative 1 and the whole matrix goes away? No, it's not even close to that easy. But this would be like an R2 question. What is the determinant? This is the abbreviation, DET. What is the determinant of this matrix? You go 1 times 7 minus 2 times 4. So that is like a little building block that will help us figure out the final answer. To get the final answer of what will get rid of this, I would multiply on both sides by this special matrix. And it's not just a negative one in there. It does, it's, it's much more complicated. And here's how we find that special matrix we should multiply on on both sides. Now, this is going to get a little weird. You have to put it in front here because do you remember that the order you have the matrix in makes a difference? Like if you forgot this, if I have two matrices, like matrix A times matrix B, the answer will come out completely different if I use B and then A. Like if there's a B here and the A here, completely different answer. Matrices aren't allowed to be switched like that. So the order we do it in matters. So you're going to put in this matrix we're going to build, and you're going to put it here, and we got to budge this red one over to make room for our matrix we're going to do on both sides. All I did is copy that over so that I'd have room for my new matrix that's going to go here. I'm going to even make it have black bars around it so they look identical. That and that is the thing we're going to put on both sides. That's what we're trying to build. Okay, server, you, you told us we're supposed to use this negative one somehow. How do we use the negative one? Here's how you build this little matrix right here. You go one over the determinant. And I'm going to make a matrix over here called A, B, C, D. And that'll show you what you do to get the other things that are in here. D, A, negative B, negative C. 
There is your little formula. You find the determinant, which I showed you how to do, but I'll remind you. The determinant was just those blue ones multiplied and the green ones multiplied, and then you subtract them. Okay. Then you put one over that determinant, which was negative one, and you take the numbers that are right here. These numbers right here, that's the ones we're trying to get rid of. That's the ones that, if they were gone, X and Y would be alone. So we're gonna take those numbers and we're gonna swap these two. See how A and D got swapped? And then we're gonna leave this B here, but we're gonna make it negative. And we're gonna leave the C here, but we're gonna make it negative. So here's my final answer. The magic inverse of this is one over negative one, because that was the determinant, times, take these two blue ones, and swap them, make this the opposite of itself, so that four turns into negative four, and make that two there in the bottom left the opposite of itself. And the final answer then is just that's negative one, and you're gonna times by each of these elements. So here, I'll make it squiggly so it's the special inverse matrix that we were just learned how to find. It comes out to negative one times the seven is negative seven. Negative one times the negative four is four. Negative one times the negative two is two. And negative one times the one is negative one. Whew. So that goes here and here. And it will cancel this one. I'm just copying now. Negative 7, 4, 2, and negative 1. Now, I know we're not all at the same ability level here. Some of you probably followed that just fine and could probably already just do one of these inverse matrices in your head. And others of you are like, I have no idea what just happened. Because okay, there's different ability levels in here. But... All of you will benefit from trying one right now. Um, so I just want to make sure I did it right. Like, it would be pretty tragic if we practice this method I just did, and I just did it wrong, and then you just all learn how to do it wrong. That would kind of suck. So I want to make sure you understand, why did I do that here? Like, why did I put that right here? Because this, now, if I do it, did it right, when I multiply by that, it should cancel it out. So I'm going to take a second and actually multiply those two. You can just watch me have to do a problem. I know it's a 2 by 2 and a 2 by 2, so my answer to it would be a 2 by 2. I'm going to do this one's row 1 and column 1. So negative 7 and 4 and the 1 and the 2. So that's negative 7 and 8. Negative 7 plus the 8 makes a 1. Do I want this thing to come out to all 1s? No. Do you remember that deal? I want it to come out to 1, 0, 0, 1. You know what I'm talking about? I want this to come out to 0, and this to come out to 0, and this to come out to 1. I got to make sure that I really did it right. Because this is a complicated process. So this spot, that's row 1, column 2. I'm going to check this, row 1, negative 7, 4, with 4 and 7. Negative 28, 
7 times 4 is positive 28. Adds up to 0. It's working! This spot here is row 2, column 1. So row 2 with column 1. That comes out to positive 2 and negative 2. That came out to 0, and I would bet you anything the last one comes out to 1. Yay. I did it right. Now, what did I do again? I did the determinant of it. Do you remember that part? It was the blue ones and the green ones multiplied and then subtracted. I put one over the determinant and then I switched around this matrix here. I switched around this matrix here and I swapped the blue ones back and forth and I made the green ones the opposite of what they were. Now, here's your, here's your big moment. Can you do it? You ready? I'll keep the numbers fairly simple. One, two, three, four. Times x, y. Five, six, seven, eight. If I could just magically divide by both sides by something, I'd divide by this. But you can't divide matrices. It doesn't work. Instead, what you can do is... I'm going to budge this one over, make room right here. I got to multiply by some special matrix here and here. And that matrix is made by doing one over the determinant. And these two switch. And these two become the opposite of what they were. There's my little diagram. And if I were taking notes, this is the way I would do it. I try to remember what the determinant was. This one's this, minus that one's that. And then I do an arrow like this, which means swap those two numbers and make those two numbers opposites. All right, see if you've got this. I'm going to pause for a second. Okay, first I gotta get the determinant. The dice are gonna determine who's getting the determinant. Row four, person five. Two, three, four, five, six, so Anna Janes, that's you. So how did you get it though? So, so determinant comes from uh, this, and you, what do you do to it again? One times four. One times four. One times four minus three times two. So did you get four minus six, which is negative two? Yes. Can you guys verify negative two is the determinant? Mm -hmm. Sweet. Okay. Then this is negative two. Now, Keenan, what the heck does this arrow back and forth mean? It means you switch those around. So what should be in the upper left? Four. Four, and then? Bottom right is one. One, good. And then what do those negatives mean? That just means you make the numbers the opposite. So negative two and? Negative three. Negative three. Raise your hand if you set this up right. Sweet. Doing better than I thought you Now, what does this negative half mean? It means multiply each of these by half. Okay, they don't all cut in half nicely. Most of them do. That three is kind of hard, but it's not that bad. One half of three is three halves. Three over two, 1.5. Decimals are allowed on this. So then this final answer here is negative a half times the four. Half of four is two, but make it negative. This one's negative, negative is positive, 1.5, AKA three over two. Half of two is one, but they're both negative. Makes it positive one and negative a half. I'm going to call it 0. 0.5. There. And that matrix goes here and here. So to actually finish this problem, And we're not going to, because 
just doing the rest of this is gonna just take so much time. I know that if I did it right, that this is going to cancel that. And now this is alone, and my answer is just two matrices multiplied, and you're supposed to know how to do that. But that got complicated, didn't it? All right, if you had to sum it up in a diagram, what I just taught you, it would be one over, what did I say before? Determinant, D, T. And then what do you do with the little matrix? Swap these and then? Make them opposite is the way I would say. Make, them, make those two spots opposite. And how do you get the determinant again? Well, that's like you got a multi, it's complicated. So I don't want to put a formula in there. I just want to say determinant. But just, I'm going to give you this matrix, five, six, nine, negative one. Would you please do this process to it so you can know what its inverse would be? Figure out the determinant of it, which involves the 5 times the negative 1 minus, this is a 9, just to be really clear, that's a 9. To come out to negative 59? Yeah. All right, awesome. Negative 1, 5. That's pretty easy. Swap those. And then negative 6, negative 9. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Cool. Then this one, I wouldn't even, there's no way this would be on the test because you'd have to do negative 1 59th times all of these numbers, which would be just such a pain. So the only way we could do it is if we said leave it like this. That was the inverse. Now, you might be like, there's got to be a faster way on the calculator. There absolutely is. Let me show you now. So grab your calculator. This is going to be very important that you stay with everybody. I'll take this. Thank you very much. Stay with everybody here. On your calculator, you're going to have to find the thing called matrix. There's a shock. Matrices would be under matrix. It's, uh, you see the math button? Look just below the math button. <coughs> Do you see that thing called matrix? All right. So go in second, and it gets the X to the negative one button, and it says matrix. So now you've got a bunch of things that says A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. Please show that to you, the kid next to you, and you'll know that you're both in the matrix thing. If you don't know where it is, please talk to that person. Where is it? Second. Yeah. Second. Yeah. Is your Zoe A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I? Okay. All right. So we're going to use the same matrix right here, 5, 6, 9, negative 1. That's our matrix that we're going to want to, like, find the inverse of. All right? So let's put that matrix in the calculator. So we're going to go... Of those three choices, do you see names, math, and edit? Yeah. yeah. Arrow over to edit. And edit matrix A by hitting enter. You are now in matrix A. And it starts out as a one by one matrix. Is our matrix actually one by one? No. Two no. Two. So change that to two and two. You'll have to use the two and the arrow and the two and hit enter. And you should see that you've now changed yours to say two by two. And then it's got zeros in everything. Well, of course, you don't want zeros in everything. You want to put in five and six. And you'll have to hit enter to actually get them in the spots. And nine and negative one. Don't forget, there's a minus key and a negative key. Use the negative key. It's at the bottom, the very bottom. Now, 
show your matrix, it should say five, six, nine, negative one. If they're stuck, this, this would, like, maybe you see that they're stuck and you can help them. Leah, please compare to the kid next to you. Show your, your calculator. Did you already? Oh, you just did it so fast I didn't see it. Okay. Okay. Now, it's going to feel like you're going to lose everything, but this is kind of like a Google Doc. When you exit out of this, the Google Doc is still there. It'll still remember your matrix. Okay, so I want you to hit the matrix button again. Second matrix. And now, it's still there. It still knows what matrix A is. Okay, you've, you've got matrix A in there already. So now, if you want to do the inverse of the A matrix, that, that is something like this, A to the negative one power. That's what the inverse is. So we have to somehow get A to be just entered in the, in the calculator. So all you have to do is hit enter. And now it should say A on your screen within a box. If you hit enter while you're on the A matrix, it'll look like that. Get that up on your screen. Compare with the kid next to you. Make sure yours looks like that. You have an A in a box? If not, ask me. Ask them. It says air data type. If it says air data type, that means when you typed into your matrix, you put in a uh, impossible thing. You probably used a minus key instead of the negative key. Is there anybody that can't get the A in the box to come up? Yeah. Now, if all you do from here is hit, don't, don't hit enter from here because all it'll do is spit out your matrix. It'll print it on your screen. You don't want that. You want A and then you want to the power of negative one. So when you've got the A on the screen, now you find the negative one power button. And you, again, you're, you've hit matrix. You've got the A in the box up on your screen. And now you put it to the negative one power. Here's the button, what it looks like. You could go caret power of negative one, and that would have also worked. When you hit enter, you should have got, I'm rounding, 0 0.0169, 0.101, 0.152 and 0.0847. Did you get the same thing as me? Yes? Yes? That's how you do it. Now, there's always people that struggle with this because it's a little weird to enter. You wanted your matrix. If you can get this up on your screen and then you can put it to the power of negative one, if these numbers are not coming out right, it's because you mistyped one of the numbers. Our matrix was five, six, nine, <coughs> negative one. And the inverse to it is that. Whew, that was one of the longer lessons that we've had. And I get there's still gonna be a few kids that need a little bit of one-on-one, -on -one, like, and I'll happily walk around and make sure you know how to do this. The kid next to you is gonna be pretty good at it, Start with them, because there's only one of me. All right, now the homework. Everybody open up the worksheet. I'm going to tell you which ones to do. I will be over there in a second. Start with the kid next to you, though. They might be able to do it. All right. Have you got the worksheet up yet? Yeah. I'm turn it my way. Thank you very much. All right, so determinants, those are pretty easy. All right, keep going. All right, thank you. For today, because it was kind of a long lesson, we're gonna do one, four, 
7, 9, and 11. We're doing 1, 4, 7, 9, 11. But do all of those. 1, 4, 7, 9, and 11. All right, read me number one. Brody. State the determinant of each matrix. Okay, for number one, what is the matrix? Is it two by two? Yes, two by two. Top left is negative six. Negative six, go to the left, go to the right? Uh, zero. And then? And then bottom right is negative six. Do you mean bottom left or? No. Read them from left to right. That's the standard way to do it. Bottom left is six. Six, and then? Bottom right is negative six. All right. And what do they want on this? Determine it? Yeah. Do you have to use a calc... You don't even know how to use the calculator for this. Because I don't even want to teach you because this is so easy to do in your head. That times that. 36. Minus that times that. Zero. The determinant is 36. That's it. This is not the inverse. The inverse is way harder. The inverse, you'd have to go one over the determinant and then times it by these two being switched and these two being opposite, but that's not what they asked. This would be inverse. Inverse uses the determinant, but, all right. So then you move on to problem four, et cetera. The rest is yours. There is a key. You should definitely practice this. This was one of the hardest days we've had in a long time, especially when it comes to calculators. Any questions before I'm done with the video? Yes? In the determinant, what if the, like it's zero? Determinant can be zero. It just means that your inverse is impossible then. Determinants can be zero. But when you do one over the determinant to do that inverse thing, then that won't work. There are things that don't have an inverse. There are matrices that don't have an inverse. The determinant comes out to zero is not wrong. It's just telling you something tells you that the inverse won't work. Okay, that's all I got for you for today.